Hey, Todd, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Good. Drive down was good? Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, no problem. You said you're from Creemore, right? So Yeah, just uh, just outside of Creemore, yeah. just uh, south of there, about 10 or 15 minutes. I awesome. was on a rural property, so cool. pretty cool. Is that where like, you want to invest or you're investing now? Is out there? Uh, so I invest, I have uh, my mom's from St. Thomas, Ontario, just okay. south of London. And yeah. I, my cousin's a realtor down there, so he got awesome. me an investment property there. And it's a cool. semi-detached uh, two-bedroom, yeah. unfinished basement. And I've Perfect. got... Uh, I'm on my second tenant there. I've owned it for two years. Nice. So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> All right. So I got your sheets. I know a bit about like what you, what you want, what you're mm -hmm. trying to get. But tell me a bit about yourself. How many properties do you own? How many do you want to own, etc. Well, I'm uh, 39 years old. I own one rental property. Nice. I hope to own many rental properties. Awesome. I hope to uh, pursue multiple strategies in the real estate investing sphere, yeah. like flips, buy and hold. Perfect. Maybe make it the move up to multifamily, to yeah. commercial. Great. So that's sort of my yeah. my goals in the uh, in the realm of real estate awesome. investing. And you want to focus around the Creemore area, Collingwood area, or? Uh, I have my sights set on Barry. Barry, okay. Like, I like the I like the demographics. Yeah. It's, grow, it's growing. Um, Much safer city in terms of economic growth. Yeah, Creemore is a little small. Yeah. Collingwood would be interesting if you're in sort of into the whole Airbnb Vacation, type yeah, thing. totally. I actually went on a date with a girl who. Nice. Uh, who did? Who does the Airbnb thing as yeah. sort of a, a super good place second, for that. second yeah. source of income? So totally. I I was impressed by the numbers, but the I guess the uh, the regulations around that. Yeah. Get a bit, uh, you can change it all anytime. Yeah. yeah so I agree. <laughs> I, yeah. The risk level is a little high in that sort of sense. And for you sure. Get the, you get the wrong people, you can just destroy your relationships with your neighbors. So. Totally. Hundred yeah, so percent. Yeah. I'm a little gun shy about that. I, I like Barry, like I said, about the demographics. Um, it's like I view it as like the gateway to the north. Totally. There's a lot of um, condo development underway downtown. Yeah. Some a little slower than others, but yeah. uh, there's a lot. If you drive downtown, there's like sites for sale. There's holes in the yeah. ground. Totally. Buildings it's growing so fast. Yeah. yeah. So like, what's the number one thing that you want help with today? That to walk away with a good plan. Like, what do you what do you need most help with? Well, I'd like to uh, learn more about duplex investing, duplex okay. conversions. It seems to be. Uh, I've done a few weeks worth of research on it. So yeah. I've watched a bunch of videos, been on bigger pockets. Yeah, perfect. So I think it's a good place to start. Like I've read about a lot of like the big time real estate investors, like guys in the states, like Donald Bren, who's yeah. down in California. He's like the biggest part building For sure, guy yeah. in the U.S. He started building homes, yeah. doing conversions. A great a lot place to start. A lot of guys yeah. got their start doing totally. starting small. So yeah, okay. So like. It, Barry is good for duplex. Like I know their laws are fairly similar to Kitchen Waterloo. I know a lot of people are doing mm -hmm. them there. Do you know a little bit more about that? Like, are they pretty lax on duplex conversions, or? I know there's there's um, one area around Georgian College that is um, where they have the secondary suites are banned currently. Okay. But I've, I've talked to a couple of realtors up there. Who's yeah. Special, like you specialize in that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I, he, one of the guys said that bylaw might be repealed in the yeah. future so there could be an opportunity yeah. there right around the schools because, yeah. because i know in the suburbs they have to let it happen there's got to mm -hmm. be zoning in the right areas for that so i know it's possible for sure mm -hmm. and then do you know like prices up there in terms of like let's get on the board here um, like average prices for the single family homes let's say and then we'll go around, from there it's probably a little less expensive than here but it's yeah the market's pretty hot right now for sure so let's say in like the six to seven hundred range for the single detached yeah like before we duplex it before we do put, let's, okay, let's be like, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the yeah, yeah. number, but uh, if we, if we use like the 500 number, I'm comfortable doing that. Yeah, yeah. but five, I was going to say, cause 600 was like more than Kitchener. I was like, whoa, really? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. So 500, cause uh, yeah, that's like exactly like Kitchener and mm -hmm. Barry's very similar to Kitchener Waterloo area in terms of like economic growth and prices are pretty similar ish. So that sounds good. Like it works here, so I know it's going to work there. Mm -hmm. And then, do you know what the duplex is worth when it's done? Like, have you seen some comps there? Um, no, I have not. To be honest. Okay, so to find that out. Yeah. So the first step for you before we even go any further would be the specialized realtor, like you said. Do you have anybody in mind that you've already spoke to or like that you want to work with? I have a couple guys I'm talking to up there. Yeah. Yeah. So figure them out first. I mean, I can give you the ideas of what we're doing here. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. the same prices, but. Mm -hmm. The same strategy will work 100%. I just mm -hmm. want to nail down these prices. So we'll use Kitchener prices going forward, which I'm sure are very close to Barry. Mm -hmm. But get the specialized realtor. Um, 
you want to make sure that they obviously work with investors and that they're investors themselves. Yes. So I don't know if you, are, if you already vetted them for that. A good general rule of thumb that I like to go by is your specialized realtor should have somewhere of 10 plus properties, ideally, uh, mm -hmm. just to make sure they're like full blown legit, right? It's just mm -hmm. gonna help you more. Because if they have that many properties, they have done renovations, they got the contractors, they got the lawyers, they got the whole team. Mm -hmm. So they're just literally gonna go, here you go, right? So that's nice for you. Mm -hmm. So just see if they check the mark for that. It's not a must to be like that, but it's just, it's ideal, right? So we get that checked off. Um, let's go back to the prices. So if you do the 500, for example, here, the duplexes, when we're done with them, um, average price is about 680, 690, but we'll just say 680. That's when it's done. Mm -hmm. So for buying it at 500 as a crappy single detached, it looks like the 1970s, you know, mm -hmm. just a single home. Uh, the renovations, if we do full blown up and down, we go a little crazy on our renos, you've probably seen, but we spend about 130,000 on the plus mm -hmm. conversion and the renovations. And that's doing the whole thing top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So essentially we're into the deal for 630, mm -hmm. all in. It's worth 680, ideally, <laughs> when we're done, right? Mm -hmm. So how much money is that? Uh, 70, 60, 50, 50K yeah. in about three months. That's the, that's the timeline as well you should try and hit is a three month mm -hmm. um, renovation. So not bad, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if try and see with your realtor if this is true there, I'm sure it's pretty close, mm -hmm. but if it is, that's essentially it. Like it's very, very simple. And we can go into more detail on how we use exact, uh, uh, exactly, but it's pretty much that easy. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think about this? Is this kind of the strategy you're leaning towards or? Yeah, I'm, I'm attracted to the, the, uh, the, the value, increase in value in, yeah. the, in, the, in the time frame. Okay. So any questions specifically about this that you're not sure about yet or you're confused about? No. Nope. Good. <laughs> do you know how to do plus convert? Like uh, how to do the whole conversion process? Are you aware of that? Uh, are we talking like building permits? Yeah, like going through the whole process. You bought the property today? Now, what do you do? Do you know uh, what to do each step by step? The one area I don't know is how to, like, where I would get stuck is how to choose, sort of organize the lay the layout of the, uh, okay. the the basement apartment. Okay. I don't like. You got. Let's, I I remember on your video you said it should be like a the basement floor plate should match the uh, the main floor. Floor plate. So roughly, if it's roughly, main, floor, yeah. main floor is a hundred, or sorry, a thousand square feet, your basement should be around the same. Should be theoretically, yeah. yeah. If the house is a bungalow, it's the same square footage mm -hmm. up and down kind of thing. I guess layout wise, real hot level. The what you're trying to shoot for is three bedrooms up and two bedrooms down. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the gold standard. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple duplexes that are three up, one down, etc. Mm -hmm. But the twos down are really the best. Mm -hmm. So for example, for rents here, the three bed in Kitchener, we're renting these. Uh, on the low end for 1750 mm -hmm. kind of rents are going up really quickly this could be 1800 but to be mm -hmm. conservative always the two bedrooms are renting for uh 1650. so that's kind of where we're shooting for for in terms of rents and this is plus hydro as well mm -hmm. so we always 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 want to split the hydro meters i don't know if you're aware of that or know how to do that but in kitchen it's very easy but you really want to pass the hydro on to the tenants yeah, absolutely. For obvious reasons. Yeah. That's what yeah. I do with my current tenant. 100%. Yeah, because yeah, doing the whole split, like the meter splits, I don't know, just itself, maybe 6,000 bucks, 8,000 bucks. But mm -hmm. it literally adds 15 to 20,000 to the value of the duplex. So that's the, the best spent money on the duplex conversion is probably right there. It's not mm -hmm. the kitchen or the bathroom like it normally is. It's actually this. So very, very important to do that. A lot of people don't. But uh, that's it for that. And then any other questions more specifically on layout or like what do you have? So, like let's like let's say we take a base like just a basement there. Yeah. Like you've got your separate entrance, like you said in the, your other video. You want yeah. you want to choose a house that has a separate entrance Always. already. Already, yeah. So you will go downstairs. Uh, you have like a bit of your uh, furnace and so on and so forth. Like. How do you choose like where to put the kitchen? Yeah. Is that sort of like you walk in there? That's obvious to you. It's obvious when I see the property because yeah. it depends property per, per property, right? So kind of depend. Let's just draw a basement here. So do this on the fly here. <laughs> Go down the stairs. Okay. So I'm trying to think of like a normal layout, but let's say the laundry room is typically like under the stairs ish. This could be somewhere here. So we got plumbing in here, right? That's, that's what we're looking for. Plumbing. Mm -hmm. So I'll just put PL for plumbing. Uh, and then there might be a bathroom, I don't know, over in this far corner, or mm -hmm. there might not be. 
but you want to have a, well, you need a bathroom, but ideally there's always one down there anyway, typically, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say we got plumbing over here and then we got a window here. So the first thing I do when I walk down the basement is I look for windows. Mm -hmm. How many windows are in the house already? Because I want to reuse the windows, at, like not necessarily the size, but if, there's, if, if it's already cut, that means I got to do less cutting. Because yeah, if exactly. you cut a brand new window, then mm -hmm. you might have to, but you're spending more money, right? Mm -hmm. So I plan the bedrooms first based on the window. So if I walk down the basement and I see a window here, typically there's one always on the end of the house. In my mind, I'm going to put a bedroom here, mm -hmm. right? Because I want to utilize that window. I might have to make it bigger, like I said, but if it's already there, it's going to be less expensive. So I got the window, bedroom, bedroom number one figured out. Second thing is bedroom number two. So let's say I got a window here outside of the of the laundry room. Let's say there's a window here in the laundry room. I'm gonna put another bedroom maybe here. And then from there, I decide where does the bathroom go and how far is the plumbing. So in this case, there's plumbing already here and there's plumbing already here. So next up is kitchen. So I got a bathroom here. I'm gonna redo this bathroom. Plumbing's already there. I'm gonna save some money. Next up is kitchen. So I'm gonna put the kitchen probably, you know, there'll be a door here, right? To go into the bedroom. So I might put the kitchen here and I'll wrap it around Hey, I got a window there that kind of lucked out. <laughs> I'll put the sink here under the window, right? Mm -hmm. So you basically, what you're trying to do is not have your kitchen way over here. Like let's say there wasn't plumbing here and the plumbing's all the way over here. You want to avoid trenching the concrete to put a kitchen here because that's going to be really expensive to yeah, trench that yeah. up. So that's what you're looking for. Where are the windows? Where can I put the bedrooms? And then where's the plumbing? Can I keep it as close as possible? Mm -hmm. If not, well then too bad, right? You, sometimes you have to do this. I've done this multiple times where it just didn't work out. The plumbing's like way over here, but I needed the kitchen way over here and I had to trench mm -hmm. is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But you're trying to avoid that if possible. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of case by case basis of what's the layout going to be. But the first thing I look for is where are the bedrooms and the windows? Where can I tuck those in? And then second is where's the plumbing? Where can I put the kitchen based on the plumbing? Um, for me, I wouldn't sacrifice putting the kitchen near the plumbing, even if it was like in a, a stupid spot because it's close. I'd rather have the best layout possible and I'll pay for the trenching if I have to, mm -hmm. to get the kitchen to where I need it to be. But I'm trying to be thinking about it as you know, much as possible. Can I keep it close to the plumbing or not? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm rambling a lot on this <laughs> on the layout, but it's very, very important to try and keep you know, the plumbing as close as you can. Well, no, I, yeah. I, I kind of feel like it's important to like, get a good layout, otherwise it's not really a rentable. Totally. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, suite, so. yeah, layout's very important. So, like, this would be living room, kitchen, right? So, we got living room here, kitchen. So, I always like to keep these open to each other. So, mm -hmm. the kitchen, living room always have to be essentially the same room, right? Mm -hmm. And open concept. That's what that's a must as well. So, you don't want to have like a, a kitchen in a room and you walk out into a doorway. Like, we don't want that. We want mm -hmm. this to be open concept in a sense nowadays. Mm -hmm. And most basements allow for that, especially if you're, if you're buying a bungalow. This will almost always work. But the bedrooms is what I'm saying. You want to like kind of tuck away in the corner, pretty much always in the corner of the house with a window. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the rules of thumbs. There's like three rules of thumbs there. Mm -hmm. But again, it might totally not work out that way and you got to do what you got to do. You got to do the plumbing where you got to do it, right? But I'm trying to be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So like you walk, you walk into, a, you walk into a, a bungalow, you walk it down to the basement. It's a yeah. thousand square feet. You yeah. know, I can put two bedrooms in for, for sure. sure. Yeah. You walk into a basement at 600 square feet. It's getting tight. Getting yeah, tight, maybe yeah. a one bedroom. Yeah. yeah, which is fine. Like the one bed, the three and a one is still great. It just means instead of paying 500, we might pay 470 mm -hmm. for that smaller house, right? The, th the three and the twos in your area and here for sure is going to be the 500 mark plus 100%. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather do the three and a two and pay more. That's fine. Mm -hmm. The three and a two is always better because mm -hmm. you can get higher rents. And then the other benefit to a two bedroom instead of a one is that with a two, you're going to get a family, probably going to be mom and dad and mm -hmm. then one young kid. So probably like a young millennial family with one kid. Those are always my tenants in the basement. Always mm -hmm. the upstairs of the three beds is usually a more mature family. Maybe their age is 35 to 45. They got two kids, three kids. They're upstairs, right? So we always want families living in these, which to, like, that's what I want. Some people watching might be like, no, I only want to do single people or whatever. Right? Uh, for me, I always want families living in my properties because they stay longer, they treat the house better, they're putting their roots down, they got mom, dad, the kids, dog, cat, that's what mm -hmm. I want. Because that means they're going to stay for like five years minimum. So you, you want pets, your pets are okay? Yeah, yeah, always, yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. using waterproof flooring and like indestructible flooring in case, yeah, yeah. you know, there's whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I want the dog and the cat, I want the families, which sounds weird, but again, we're making these houses look amazing. Like, we're attracting a very mm -hmm. high quality tenant 
uh, a good, you know, people who are going to treat the home really well. So they're not going to mess around mm -hmm. and as much. I mean, anything possible, <laughs> anything possible, but really never yet have I had a tenant in trash house yeah. ever. Yeah. So because we renovate them to such a high value, we're not getting mm -hmm. the weirdos, <laughs> right? <laughs> so some people will be like, oh, I wouldn't do that. I'll just rent it out. But that's when you get the problem is when you just rent it out for 1300 mm -hmm. and the house looks like shit, right? So, and going back to the one bedroom, that's when you'll probably attract a young couple with no kids. So mm -hmm. they're, they're more likely to leave in a year or two, which mm -hmm. is also fine. Because mm -hmm. when they leave, you can raise the rents, you can do what you want, but that's kind of the difference between those two. Can, can we, can we back, Matt, can we backtrack yeah. for a second? Sure. So like when you, so there's two ways of doing this strategy. One is to do it as like a burr. Yeah. And the second way is like, like sometimes you sell them or do your clients sell them after they do the renovations? Sometimes, yeah. So some of the clients sell them. Uh, right now with these numbers, it would be kind of hard to make a profit because if you're in for 630, we also have to include land transfer tax, uh, lawyer mm -hmm. fees twice, financing costs, realtor fees, those expensive realtors. <laughs> so we have to include those. <laughs> so if you're in for 630 plus all those fees I just mentioned, you're probably honestly, when it's all said and done, probably into 665, 670. And then we're going to sell for 680. Does it make sense to flip no, it? No. no. So it hardly ever makes sense. And nowadays, right now, to flip a duplex almost never works right. out. Probably the same in Barry as well. So these are really meant for burrs and rentals. Okay. Yeah. So the, I mean, you could flip it. Like if we get this deal off market for whatever reason and we paid 450 and then we do the same thing and now it's worth 680, 100%, you could flip that and make money. It, yeah, but MLS wise, never going to happen. Not yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. And like when you're doing the burr, you're taking how much, like, would you be able to take out for your next deal after three months? Like, yeah. Just a 50K? So or? theoretically, you have the 50K, right? So yeah. that's what you're getting back. So the way it works uh, with my clients and partners, just real easy math, to do the whole project, to buy that $500,000 duplex, you know, we have 100K, 20% down, right? That's 100K. Mm -hmm. And then 130K to do the runner, right? So they're usually in for about 250K with. Uh, renovations and closing costs and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. we're usually into the deal for 250, all cash, whatever. And then when we do the refi, they're usually only in it for about 100. It's hard to explain the burr here because this is way better for a mortgage broker, but it works out usually where you're only into the deal for 100K. And those are deals here in Kitchener Waterloo. And by the way, for those watching, that's a smoking deal. Mm -hmm. You're into the deal for 100K. Yes, I know, but it's mm -hmm. still, that doesn't get better than that. That's a grand slam. <laughs> mm -hmm. for Kitchener Waterloo. Yeah. For you, Barry, you might be in it for 75K, let's say, maybe mm -hmm. a little lower. But uh, we're, we're not seeing the days anymore of getting all your money back on a refi plus mm -hmm. more. That doesn't happen in Kitchener Waterloo. And mm -hmm. in 2020, probably nowhere in Southwestern Ontario. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't happen. So that's as good as it gets right now, which is, which is fine. Like, that's a great deal. So you're in for 250. Three months later, you get 150,000 back. You're in the deal for 100. Do it again. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it works. Any questions on that? No, it's, yeah. that's amazing. That's 100K in your pocket, yeah. whether you want to buy a house or... Put that's the thing. Like if we buy like a single family home, which we could do at any time, like a, you know, a semi-detached rental, my favorite basic single family rental properties, you're in it for 100 for that. So you're going to buy a semi-detached, you know, renovations, probably about 30K. You're in it for 100 and you're going to hold it now, right? For five mm -hmm. years, let's say. With the duplex, we got a way better quality property, higher cash flow. We force appreciation and we're still in for the same 100. Mm -hmm. So if you have the money, like the 250 liquid or on a credit line or whatever to do the duplex conversion, right? Always go for that option if you can, because it's better than just the single family rental, right? Mm -hmm. So pros and cons to each. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's getting as much money as you can so totally. you can get that next down Do payment. the next one, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's that magic down payment that's important. Yeah, 100%. What's next? What else do you need? Um, can we talk about the financing a little bit more? Yeah. So like you're saying your clients need like to play in the Kitchener Waterloo market, they need 250K yeah. liquid yeah. to play. So for sure. Like where do they get that money? Like cold hard cash the whole, Could the whole, be. The whole bit or? Unlikely, but it, some of them do. Uh, most of the time it's a HELOC. So they're pulling, maybe they have 100K in savings, just liquid cash. They're gonna mm -hmm. borrow the other 150K to do the renovation, the conversion, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. When they do the refi, they pay off the HELOC back again and they're, they're out for the 100K, right? Mm -hmm. So, but most like 90% of the time, uh, clients and partners are using their HELOC to make this all happen. Mm -hmm. So whatever way you get the money, it could be private money as well. I 
a lot of my clients are tapped out now. They've used all their HELOC, they've used all their cash. So they're gonna use private money and they're, they're getting money offered to them at 12%. Very expensive, but mm -hmm. if the deal is gonna make it happen, then you gotta do what you gotta do, right? The next time you can do, which is what I do, which is like the partnership route, right? Mm -hmm. So where you're the expert, I'm the expert. Mm -hmm. I find the deal, I got the systems, I got the contractors, I got the realtor, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run the whole show. And then my partner is the money person. Mm -hmm. So they bring all the 250. Mm -hmm. And they get the mortgage in their name as well. Mm -hmm. So we talk about partnerships soon. I know you had a question about that on the forum, right? How to mm -hmm. get partners. So that's, those are basically the four, really most only ways, popular ways to do this. So always start off with your cash or your HELOC, right? Do as many as you can on your own mm -hmm. before you start using these guys, the private money and, this, and the partnership. So like I have my, like I said, I have my rental property in St. Thomas. Yeah. I roughly paid 340 for it. Um, I mean, I have a, my mortgage is now about 245. Yeah. So I'm almost at the sort of 100K of equity. For sure, yeah. Perfect. Refi that. <laughs> well, like when I, well, when I go like on like the CBC, CIBC website yeah. and say HELOC, For sure. that in, they're like, oh, you can, here's, you can have 40K. Yeah, because 80% of the, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's not enough to yeah. sort of. Close the gap to do it all, yeah. Yeah, close the gap at all, but yeah. it's, still, it's still quite a bit of money. But. For sure, yeah. So we used it, right? Like get the HELOC and just have it ready in case something comes up or if you want to do something else with it. Mm -hmm. But just have it there. But you're probably, I can sense, you're probably needing to do the partnership route, mm -hmm. which is what we all do. We all mm -hmm. have to go here at, at mm -hmm. one point or another. So you're probably ready for this now, where you need more money, more partners to qualify for mortgages. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of where you feel you need to go or? Well, no. I. I could be the money partner. Okay, you cool. Know? I like that. I, I don't. I don't personally. I don't have a, a T four income. I have yeah. a pretty good T one income right now. Yeah. So Perfect. Yeah. I, I don't think I could walk to CIBC and go get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, none of us can. <laughs> <laughs> We're past that. <laughs> we can, I could go to a private through a mortgage broker and get a for sure a normal mortgage. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So how many properties do you think you can buy on your own with what you have now? If you want to go that route and buy as many as you can, how many do you think? Because you, you have one property now, right? One rental. Yeah. So I could probably. Like if I was just a do, if I was if we were just normal buy and hold, yeah, I could probably do two more. Two more? Is is that the way you want to go, or? Well, no, I'm I'm attracted to the more short term. Okay. Scenarios. Flips and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So if um, like I like the thing that attracts me to the duplexes is, is that sort of three month. Yeah. Turn around. Co cosmetic. Exactly. For the most part. Yeah. Renovations and for sure. you can pull the money out and move on Do to investing yeah. or put it in your pocket, whatever. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So there's that option. Um, where do you want to go with this? Let's ask that. Like, where? In what's the five year goal for Todd? What's what's the best Todd life ever? How much money are you making a month? What does life look like? Let's go back to the basics. Oh, how, how much money am I making a month? Yeah. Oh, that's let's, let's, interesting make question. let's make it thing. It's so always is. Uh, I feel comfortable around sort of fifteen, twenty thousand bucks a month. Okay. Let's yeah. go twenty. 20k a month uh, and then what does your lifestyle look like are you still working because because what's your work now like what, what, what do you do for work now I was in commercial real estate okay yeah I work for a retirement home developer okay nice so I like to be more into like a full-time investor okay that's, that's, awesome. that's my goal perfect full-time yeah. investor making 20k a month we'll love it and then what strategy really do you gravitate to? Is it the flips? Is it the buy and holds? What's really? To be honest, man, I think uh, in the short term, it's the, it's, the, it's the flips. Okay. But I recognize at the same time, you gotta be accumulating some of those buy and hold properties yeah, as well. For sure. I like to sort of, I like to move sort of up in terms of asset class yes. faster for sure. than uh, sort of the guy who does single family homes and tries to get break 40. hundred percent. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So if you've seen a couple of my videos, you probably know where I'm going with this, but how do you feel about like private lending? How do you feel about that? Like you just being a lender and living off the money. I can do a bit of that. Yeah. Everybody can. So I asked. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how much money you need to, to get this every month? I have no how much idea. cash do you need? Probably uh, a million or a couple million. So you need two million. Yeah. So you can lend that out all day long to people like me, to flippers, 
all day long to have flippers at 12%, right? Mm -hmm. So two million bucks cash at 12% is 20,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Very, very realistic goal. If you don't mind sharing, like how much equity or like net worth you have now, if you had all your assets, your home, your, your rental. Actually, I do mind not Okay, yeah, we won't share that. We'll do it all, we'll do it privately. Yeah. Because the reason I ask is a lot of people have more than they think they have, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have like an $800,000 net worth, I'd say, let's say you just said, I want to sell everything. I want to sell my property, I want to sell my single family home and rent or whatever. If mm -hmm. I sold all my stuff, you know, I'd have $800,000 or whatever, mm -hmm. right? 800,000 at 12% is 8,000 a month, which is more than most people make working mm -hmm. all day, right? So it's just very interesting how powerful this can be, how powerful lending can be. And with this strategy, we're not flipping, we're not risking, we don't have tenants, no toilets, nothing. And right? you're securing it against the property. 100%, yeah. yeah. So it's super safe as a private lender mm -hmm. in Canada, especially in this area in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw that out there because every time I do this little example, it usually people are like, holy shit, right? Like that's mind opening, right? Because mm -hmm. nobody really thinks about that. And for me personally, I just found out about private lending like a year and a half ago for myself. And I've been doing it for mm -hmm. like 11 years now, hustling, paying mm -hmm. all the, all the pro properties, which is necessary. But I found out about this lifestyle and it just opened a whole new world for me. I was like, really? Like, it's crazy. If only you could find someone to lend you two million bucks and six percent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, man, I do that a little bit now. <laughs> okay, so that is a strategy as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's a great strategy. But yeah, so twenty k is very doable. Like it, mm -hmm. two million is also very doable. And how we get that is the buy and holds. So that's why I'm kind of going full circle here. Mm -hmm. The number one strategy to make money and get actually really wealthy is the buy and hold. Mm -hmm. Because you need to buy, to, to get to this goal of 2 million net worth, you're, realistically, you're probably going to need about 15 to 20 properties. Mm -hmm. um, and in about five years, seven years of having these, you'll get to here easily. Mm -hmm. And then you're ready to live the life, man. The, mm -hmm. the best Todd life ever. <laughs> so it's what I'm trying to get at is that it's not that hard or that long to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But step one is for you and what we just kind of discussed, you need to do more of these, the buy holes. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you have the ability to buy two more, um, I think you probably should. Why not? If you have the money mm -hmm. and the resources to get two more, mm -hmm. whether they're single families or duplex conversions, maybe, maybe you can only do one duplex conversion more on your own because they're more expensive and stuff. That's fine. I think you should do that because then you're building, which is step two in the whole thing, is your resume. Because well, why we do this, why we care about this is step three. You need to get partners to give you money and qualify for mortgages because you do need more buy and hold to, get, to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And the way you get partners is they have to trust you and like you and know that you're not gonna lose their money, right? So you need experience, basically. Proven mm -hmm. track record. So that's kind of, I think, your game plan, which is almost everybody's game plan. It's very mm -hmm. similar. There's minor differences between everybody's exact strategies, but the, the play for most people is get more buy and holds to build your net worth. And then once you have a proven resume, then you can go out to the general public and start looking for partners. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of ways to do that. We can do the, the social media way, the, the marketing way, which is the way I do it. Mm -hmm. There's the way of networking, just meeting people. There's that way, whatever way is natural for you. Mm -hmm. But you do have to go here if you want to get to here, essentially is what I'm saying. Yes, absolutely. So you need the partner attraction. And then the best way that I found to get partner attraction is to just kick ass and show people that you kicked ass. Mm -hmm. The resume and the track record is everything. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays where people don't trust people because everybody's a salesman, everybody, you know, so the only way to get around that is by having a track record that people can see. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've seen your properties, I've looked at them, I've seen them on social media, I've seen pictures or whatever. Okay, it looks like you know what you're doing and then they give you the money. That's mm -hmm. really how it works. <laughs> so, how do you feel about this exact path? Um, I like that path. Uh, I think the, the, the most challenging thing is when you're not a realtor yeah. is building that resume of projects like i've in the commercial like i worked for a developer that was building retirement homes and yeah finding that property for sure is a lot of work Definitely. so finding those deals finding that 1970s bungalow yeah. with this separate basement entrance how many people are chasing those in uh, kitchener waterloo right now tons yeah yeah so that's going to happen in barry as well i can almost mm -hmm. almost 100 percent. that's happening as well so what you need to do is get the right realtor on your team, which we talked about on the first page here. Mm -hmm. They're really, they're literally, and I'm not just being biased because I am one, they're literally the most important team member mm -hmm. of your whole entire team. Because if they don't work, mm -hmm. your business doesn't work. So you need them to find you the deals because you're too busy, right? You're working now and you're busy doing this. You're busy building a resume, talking to partners, 
Because mm -hmm. your sole job as a real estate investor, which a lot of people don't know this or don't realize, your only job is to raise money and find deals. But your realtor is actually finding the deals. But this is all you're focusing on. If you find yourself spending 80% of your time looking at deals on the MLS, you know, going to properties, um, dealing with tenant phone calls, scheduling your contractors, etc., doing all the stuff of the business, mm -hmm. you're doing the wrong shit. Literally 80% of your, of your time as a real estate investor, which for you might be 10 to 15 hours a week, right? Like while you're building your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eight to 10 of, your, of those hours per week need to be spent solely on getting more of this mm -hmm. so that you can buy this. That's it. So you need to kind of reframe how you do your business or like what you're focusing on essentially. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a little bit surprising probably because you're probably realizing once you start this or paying attention, like, whoa, I'm spending too much time emailing tenants back, you know, just dealing with shit, like stuff that isn't going to move you forward. Mm -hmm. So it's, gonna, it's not going to take, you know, it'll take a while, it won't just happen like this, but just be thinking of what you're doing on a daily basis. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not really doing this. I'm not really doing anything that's going to get me more of this. Which for me, like for example, just put some context to it. For me, what this looks like is making videos. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I get this. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of my time with Tyler here making videos, thinking of ideas, brainstorming ideas. What can we do? YouTube lives. It's just ways to get more attention on us, right? Mm -hmm. So most of my time is spent doing this. So that's just something to think about. You should be doing that as well. Whatever that looks like for you. If you don't want to be the social media personality or be on camera, totally understand. I think it's the most powerful way to get money, but doesn't mean it's, it's not the only way. There's a million ways to get money from people. For you, it might be going to meetings, might be calling people in your past industry, in the commercial industries, going, mm -hmm. hey, now I'm buying residential duplexes, I'm doing some conversions, etc. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? That might be a great way for you. Mm -hmm. Or going on LinkedIn and catching up with your past colleagues or whatever. So what, like Matt, what if you don't, like I'm not a, a renovator. I know your background from yeah. your videos is in carpentry. Like, yeah. like I don't have, like I'm not, like I, I can't walk in, okay, this room, this bathroom is going to cost me like yeah. five grand or sure. 10 grand or whatever. Yeah. Like I don't have that expertise. So how do I sell myself as the investor to other money yeah. partners? So you have the team that does know yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So you have the contractor. So all going back to the resume is just trust and authority, but basically your team members are the experts, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're hooking up with an expert realtor, we're hooking up with good contractors. So after this today, you should be going back to the Barrie and Creemore area or whatever and just looking for contractors mm -hmm. that you can trust. Hey, I'm going to be doing a lot of projects in the Barrie mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to be giving you, you know, s some regular work. Do you want to be a part mm -hmm. of my team? Mm -hmm. And there's a whole, we can talk about that for like a whole hour on how to find a good contractor. Essentially, to make it real quick, Looking for somebody who's trustworthy and always trust your gut, number mm -hmm. one. Because I said the realtor is the most important member on your team. The contractor is the one who's the most likely to screw you over. Mm -hmm. They're the one who's going to cost you the most money. It's not going to be your realtor, your mortgage broker, your lawyer. The contractor is going to be the one who fucks you around. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they're good. And every single time I've ever gotten screwed by a contractor, I knew it ahead of time. I didn't trust my gut. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so trust your gut when you meet contractors. Mm -hmm. um, that's the best thing I can say for that. And then also ask for um, referrals from other investors in your area. That's always mm -hmm. the best way. If you have other investors that you can kind of talk to in the Barrie area, mm -hmm. just ask them like, hey, what contractors do you use? Have you mm -hmm. used them before? They're gonna say, yeah, these guys are great. Okay, okay go to them. Mm -hmm. Get them to be on your team. Mm -hmm. So we always want to, going back to this, leverage our team. So when we're talking to potential partners, they might be like, hey, how long have you been in the business? You might say one or two years or whatever, or I don't know how to do what you're telling yourself. I don't know mm -hmm. how to do renovations on bathrooms. I don't know the cost. Don't say that loud. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll just be like, you know what? I got the contractor on my team. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. They've worked for me and a bunch of other investors. Mm -hmm. They know exactly how much it's going to cost. When we go see a property, you, know, you can bring them in and, mm -hmm. and you can tell the partner. They'll tell me how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. We'll get a budget laid out and then I'll come back to you with, with all the numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that could be a way like, for you to kind of get around that question of, oh, like you don't have any experience doing this, you only have one property, which mm -hmm. will happen. This is why I'm pointing it out. People mm -hmm. will say like, why should I invest with you? You only have one property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I have the team. I've spent the whole year building the team. I got the realtor, I got everybody in place. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to other real estate investors, like I got it on lockdown. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, and then they're gonna trust you way more, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying the resume is important because once we get to property, you know, three to five, once you're up at that range, the question of are you real anymore goes out the window. You clearly are real. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, go I'm saying maybe you should buy two more properties on your own if you have the, the funds and the resources to do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should get one or two more. 
Because mm -hmm. then you'll have two or three properties before you start going out to the general public looking for partners. Because mm -hmm. then you're just at a way higher authority level. Mm -hmm. A lot of people you speak to, like every regular person out there, if you say, I have two rental properties plus my own home, they're gonna be like, what the fuck? Like, that's crazy. So you're gonna go way up here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the reality of why we use the resume and the teams as leverage. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, man. So that's the game plan for you. I would focus on the more buying holes, obviously, to get the net worth up. And you're really spending all your time right now in this zone of experience, experience, authority, authority, talking to people about money, to raise money, tell people what you're doing. And that, that's like, that's, that's your life for the next 10 years. <laughs> that's what we do, man. We just focus on this over and over and over again. That, this is all you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And so like going back to like the, the duplex conversion, like what do you spend on the kitchen? What do you spend on the bathroom? Like what yeah. do you spend on the bedroom? Like, yeah, so like the 130 was the total like whole house flip kind of thing. If we break it down a little mm -hmm. bit off the top of my head here, you know, kitchens for what we're doing are typically about uh, like 6K. That's just the cabinet probably with, the, with the appliances and the countertop and the sink, blah, 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 blah. It's probably about 10K per kitchen. So this is the bulk of your renovation budget. It's gonna go in, obviously kitchens and bathrooms, right? Mm -hmm. So each kitchen is probably 10K kind of minimum for the whole thing, appliances, countertops, et cetera. And then the bathrooms, that can, that can be a gong show because upstairs is easy, right? The plumbing's already there, the bathtub's already there. We're probably just swapping it out, right? So the upstairs bathroom might only be honestly like 3,000 bucks to kind of change it over. The basement is usually where it costs the most because we're jackhammering, we're moving plumbing. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to avoid. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna have, it's gonna happen. I've only had like one or two duplexes where I've walked in and the bathroom was literally already there and I'm gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna switch out the, the fixtures. Most times you're gonna have to put the tub three inches over there. Now we're into the jackhammering and doing mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? So the basement's always way more. So while the upstairs bathroom might be 3K to totally remodel, the downstairs is probably closer to 8K with mm -hmm. all of the demolition, the moving the plumbing and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, kitchens and bathrooms obviously are always more expensive. Bedrooms, living rooms are cheap because we're just doing flooring, paint, trim, right? The mm -hmm. easy stuff. But if I had to lay out just for context, like the upstairs, if we had the 130 budget, right? The upstairs portion might honestly be only yeah, 30 to 40K to flip the whole upstairs. The other 100 or 90K is dedicated to the downstairs. Mm -hmm. So it's way more expensive down there. Obviously we're soundproofing, doing the drywall, cutting the windows, moving the plumbing for the kitchen, et cetera, right? So mm -hmm. the bulk of the money for the rental, obviously in the basement. Mm -hmm. So 30 to 40K in upstairs. If I had to break it down, 100, something like that. Sorry, if you say 100 to 150K or 100 to, or 50K to 100K? I should have done 90 to 100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100 to 90. <laughs> so yeah, the basement is probably 90K, 100K. Yep. To do the whole basement, upstairs is 30, 40K, depending how much you got to do up there. That's mm -hmm. kind of a general rule if I had to break it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the bulk of your money and the bulk of the work is the basement. The other thing that you're stuck on or? So like team members, obviously you have like your realtor, your mortgage broker, yeah. your attorney, your contractor. Like who else do you have? Do you have like an architect or? Who's doing the Question. plans? Yeah, so it's always a, it's like my guy's not a full-blown architect, but I, I call him one because I don't know. What do you call these guys, a drawer? <laughs> Dra <laughs> floor pen, floor I pen. think they're called like draftsmen or something. Draftsmen, yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. So you need a draftsman, not the drawer like what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so the context, he charges me 1200 bucks mm -hmm. to do the plans. So he draws the basement, so I'll go in there, I'll tell him I want the bedroom over here, mm -hmm. basement over here, or bathroom over here. He'll probably be like, that was a dumb spot. I'm going to put it over here. That happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're smarter, basically. They'll figure out the plan with you on what's best. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to draw it and submit the permit on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So that's what my guy does for me. So it's about 1200 bucks. I think that's what it cost me. Yeah, or no, sorry, 1800 1800 bucks. Um, and then he also does the upstairs. But the upstairs doesn't need as much detail as the downstairs. For, for Kitchener, anyway. The city only wants to see what's currently up there. No measurements, no nothing. Just draw what the floor plan kind of is. Mm -hmm. The basement is like literally all the measurements, everything has to be there. So yeah, they, they do all that for you. They do the window sizes, they do all the calculations, how big does the window have to be, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So they're really good for that. So you, you will need one of those. And then you pretty much got the rest. So the realtor, mortgage broker, obviously, the lawyer to close the deal, and then the contractors. 
do you have like like a designer who like picks your colors or designs your My kitchen wife. for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you need one of those. No. <laughs> um, it could be you, anybody. That's more like those. Are, those are really expensive. Those are really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. No. <laughs> so you need. Uh, it could be anybody for that. You can definitely hire somebody for that. Hundred yeah. percent. Like we even do that for our clients here in Kitchener, right? Like we'll manage the whole renovation for mm -hmm. them for a fee. So in a sense, like I guess we are that as well. So like when you walk in, you figure out where okay the, uh, totally. the dishwasher is going here, the fridge is totally. going here, like that sort of yeah. Based on your experience, like you can sort of pick okay, I'm gonna put the dishwasher in the middle of the, the kitchen cabinets here. Yeah. Then the fridge that's in the corner. Exactly. Like the more you do this, mm -hmm. you'll, it'll just come easy. Like we've done, I don't know about. 70 renovations now in total mm -hmm. with our properties and clients' properties. So like, this is easy. So for us, like when I walk into a property, when I'm checking it out for a client or partner, I can literally tell within 10 minutes the whole floor plan, mm -hmm. and I've already done my inspection on top of that in the 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Easy. So you'll get to the point where you're just walking through, and yep, yep, that's going there, that's going there, easy. And you can just mm -hmm. relay that information to your contractors, your draftsmen, etc. Mm -hmm. So just experience, right? Mm -hmm. The more you do this, the faster it'll get, but you gotta start somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so that's what that's basically your team members um but again lean on other investors for you like i'd really lean on finding other investors in barry and asking who are they using who, what mm -hmm. draftsmen yeah what sure. contractors and just use their experience use their leverage use mm -hmm. their mistakes because mm -hmm. maybe they hired a bunch of shit contractors like i did right now they got a good mm -hmm. a good few of them right so use theirs oh, that's uh, yeah yeah you Somewhere on bigger pockets, I saw a video of a guy saying, "You go hang out at Home Depot at like six o'clock in the morning. You'll totally you'll get the most organized yeah, contractors." Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good one. The guys who come at like ten o'clock, the yeah. ones that forget They're all the shit. They're all drunk and hungover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've hired a bunch of those guys. Trust me, literally druggies. <laughs> we won't get into that, but yeah, the worst. So I've done all that. Yeah, that's a great point. Go at six in the morning, find the good ones. Yeah, that, that was kind of extreme, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we won't do that. <laughs> we'll just ask other people who they're using and we'll just take them. <laughs> so do, do, like, do some of your clients like, buy the, the conversion like, as their like, like primary residence like, with 5% down, then do the, uh, the conversion? And... That's a way better question for your mortgage broker, and depending on your personal situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that on video, but, oh, but yeah, yes, yes, people yes. do it. Okay, so, yeah, wink, wink. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> we just... You gotta move in though, okay? No. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, so yeah, you can do that. The better way if you're gonna do this honestly is the 20% down. You're not gonna get the same HD fees and all the bullshit. And you'll get a better mortgage rate and blah, 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 right? So, so yeah, the, the, the question about that, so you, you do it properly, you do your burr, you get your tenant in, are you, ca are you cash flowing at that point? Like, are you positive cash flow? You're not, you're not yeah. handing the... So after, when we're done this and it looks mm -hmm. like I ended up there, we're typically about 300 to 400 bucks a month cash flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and again, people are like, what, I'm getting a thousand bucks in Ohio. And it's like, well, here in Kitchener, again, that's a grand slam. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's really as good as it gets here. Most of, yeah, it can be around 200 sometimes even mm -hmm. cash flow. But we're in a good area. We're in a safe town. Mm -hmm. You know, there's stuff going on here. We're not going to go into a recession. Or like when we do go into the real recession, this one was not. When we do go <laughs> to the real one, you know, Kitchener will still be here. Will yeah. the rinketing town in Ohio still be there? Probably not. So that's no, the, <laughs> America is much more sensitive yeah. to the Yeah, I'm just making fun wins, of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's people that invest in like, I don't know, Timmins, Ontario, or like whatever. It's like, dude. One horse yeah. town. <laughs> One pony town, exactly. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want to do that. So yeah, Grand Slam here. And Barry is very similar to Kitchener. That's why I'm making those jokes, because it has the same kind of economics. Barry is probably like 10, 15 years behind Kitchener in terms of growth, but it's got it going on. Yeah, I would say the one comment I'd add to that is that it doesn't necessarily have the same sort of economic underpinnings in terms of like manufacturing. It's exactly, yeah. But, uh, but there's a ton of stuff going on. It's a huge there. commuter town. Yeah. It's a, what People I call Toronto it, live there. Gateway to the north. Exactly. Yeah, everyone sort of goes totally. there on the way to the cottage. So they, 100%. Yeah, so it's a very A lot of people work in retail. Toronto and live in Barrie, which is insane Absolutely. to me, but they do it. They take the train at 6 in the morning and they're in Toronto by 7.30 or whatever, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, great area for that. There's a ton of people that do that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So yeah, you're in a good area. You got a good strategy. How much time do I have left? We keep going. Any other final questions that you got? So you mentioned property management. So you outsource your property management. Yeah, always, always. <laughs> always, always. So you want to get to that point. Obviously, you're, when you have a couple of properties, and if you're close, again, how close are you from Creamer to Barry? Like 45 minutes? 45 minutes. Okay, so you're not too far. For you, I'd, still, I'd highly recommend hiring it out because you mm -hmm. want to build a business. 
Mm -hmm. The only way you can do that is remember, you're focusing on this stuff. You're not focusing on tenant phone calls and that shit. Mm -hmm. So, and it forces you to buy good properties like cash flow to pay the property manager, right? So you're getting mm -hmm. the right property at the right time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me, always outsource, unless you're like 22 years old and you're just starting off and you live in the city you invest in, cool. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can manage your own to find out how shitty it is and then you'll pass it off, right? For you, you already know how shitty it is, so you don't have to go through that stage. So <laughs> hire it out, 100%. And it just, it just gives you more time. Mm -hmm. The whole point of investing is to have time and not be in the business is enjoying your life, right? So mm -hmm. that's the worst thing to manage on your own. <laughs> well, like, are there a lot of, like, property managers that do single-family homes? Totally, yeah. Duplexes? Yeah, yeah, they all do, yeah. 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 So, again, just lean on other investors. Do you have, like, a networking group up there? Obviously not right now, but some sort of things that go on there where you can meet other local investors? I know there are some, like, yeah. networking groups up there. I haven't... Even Facebook groups, for, for now, there's, there's yeah. always Facebook groups of investors in Barrie. I'm sure there is. Just type in Barrie Real Estate on Facebook. I'm sure there'll be a ton of groups. Yeah. And just chat in there for now, network in there. Mm -hmm. Just be like, hey, what's going on? Who's investing in Barrie? Mm -hmm. Talk to them. What are they investing in? Maybe the duplex conversion doesn't even work in Barrie. I'm pretty sure it does, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, maybe there's something better that works in Barrie. Maybe vacation rentals. I don't know, right? But Oh, yeah, I did have a question. Um, so, like, the type of, like, the age of the property you, you were talking like 1960s onwards or? yeah for here like in here in kitchener like 80 percent of kitchener waterloo was built in the 70s 60s 70s mm -hmm. so those are perfect because they built so many bungalows in that era mm -hmm. so and they're they're good because they're ugly and outdated so they mm -hmm. work great i don't know how old is barry like what's the average is it kind of that age or is it the it's 80s, got 90s? an old downtown and yeah. it's got a lot of the suburbs i would say are from like Let's say the 80s onwards. Exactly. So about 10, 20 yeah. years behind. So yeah. So that's that's great. So you're mm -hmm. getting better quality homes, but they're probably still outdated like crazy, right? There might not, there might not be too many with the separate entrances. For yeah. The so, so that's the thing. Check for check for those out. We we, we always want to avoid like adding a separate entrance because that just costs an insane amount of money. What was it like a ten thousand? Probably cost? ten thousand. Yeah. To dig a stairwell down, like we just don't want to get into that because mm -hmm. you need reinforcing and engineer. It's just a gong show. Trust me, I've been through a couple of those. Mm -hmm. So try and find ones that already have it. Typically, they're a bungalow or a side split, back split. Are there a mm -hmm. lot of those properties in Barrie? Yeah, there's lots of side split, hills, back split. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the back splits are, are like an 80s, mm -hmm. 90s era kind of build. So mm -hmm. those work also super well, even better than the mm -hmm. bungalows, honestly. Because you have some bedrooms above grade with the back split, side splits mm -hmm. for the basement. So that's fantastic. So maybe that's the strategy for Barrie is the, bungalow, or the side splits, right? Mm -hmm. Who knows? So you got to talk to the realtor in your area, kind of figure out like what are other people doing, mm -hmm. talk to other investors, what are you guys doing, and then you'll know what to do in Barrie, right? Mm -hmm. So like in Kitchener or Waterloo, just sort of on your experience, like how many deals do you do or do you, do you come through you for like you yeah. and your clients like per year? For duplex conversions? Yeah. We're probably about 25 a year of du just duplex conversions. And then we usually manage like at least half of those for them, plus the ones that we're buying for us. Right. Which is about, well, they're getting a little harder now, but normally we're doing about 10 to 12 of our own duplex conversions a year with partners. Right. Plus our flips and everything else we're doing. But yeah, about that. So they're out there. There's a ton of them. But right now it's getting, a, it's becoming a gone show. So like, like, are you like the only guy getting like sort of duplex conversion properties? I thought I was way? for a long time, but there's a lot more people doing it now. Probably because of honestly me doing YouTube videos. Everybody's <laughs> like, yo, let's go to Kitchener and do it. That has happened hundred percent. Yeah. So, and yeah, the market's so hot right now. Right now, we're at the end of August. Mm -hmm. uh, the market's on fire, which is typical for summer because there's less inventory on the market and a lot more buyers mm -hmm. looking. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited for September, October, mm -hmm. because then sellers will start selling again. The buyer amount won't really change, but there'll be way more listings on the market. So there'll be less people fighting over the same stuff. So mm -hmm. prices theoretically should soften a little bit or mm -hmm. just give us the chance to actually get something. Because like mm -hmm. I said, we're buying ours between 500 to 550. Right now, honestly, we're Kitchener. We're closer mm -hmm. to the 550 mark for duplex conversions. Mm -hmm. So the, we can't literally pay any more than 550. But the young home buyer who wants to get their first house, they're going to throw an offer of 580 because they just want it. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you literally overpaid like 30,000. But we can't play that game anymore, right? Yeah. Which sucks because then they close for 580. Then the next door neighbor goes, he sold for 580. I'm selling for 580. And then the next neighbor sells for 600 and up and up and up mm -hmm. it goes, right? That's kind of how the crap happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's happening right now in Kitchener. I don't know what it's like in Barry, but uh, the most conversions are getting a lot tougher. Still possible, but just harder. So are you, are you like 
thinking of changing strategies or like what's, what's your what's kind your of yeah so we're still doing these as much as we can so what we do is like these bungalows and side splits whatever they come up seven a week like almost every day we'll find one mm -hmm. and we're putting offers on every single one i like them i like them i like them i like them we lose 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 every time and then maybe we get one where they accept our offer mm -hmm. and the next client comes in we see them we offer we offer we offer we lose we lose we lose and then maybe we get one so that's the strategy we're doing, and you'll probably have to do the exact same for you. Mm -hmm. Is you're not going to win every single deal. You need to go in realizing you're not going to win, mm -hmm. but you're literally putting your max offer, all cash, firm, no conditions, on every single one that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I have some buyers that are like, I don't like that one because, I don't know, the tub's in the wrong area. There's something stupid, right? It's like, dude, you literally need to put an offer on every single one if mm -hmm. you're serious. Every mm -hmm. one has to have an offer on it that mm -hmm. makes sense and that you can make a duplex, three up, two down. Mm -hmm. You're offering every single one. I don't care if it's not in the exact area you wanted. Do you want to be a real estate investor or not? Like you mm -hmm. need to put an offer on every single one. An offer a Until day, we win. An offer day keeps the day job at bay. You got it. <laughs> I love it. That's exactly what you got to do. So for me, we used to win every single one. Because like I right. said, two years ago, like I, I was one of the only ones doing this really. So I was just having a heyday. Just boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom, picking them up. Now it's getting hard. So yeah, I'm switching strategies for my personal mm -hmm. investment strategy where we're doing flips. So we built the whole wholesaling division, the whole business to get off-market deals to do mm. straight flips. That's a more advanced strategy. I know you, you want to do flips, which is great. I think realistically, you're probably three to four years away from doing that because I like to see you get more of the equity, uh, the, more mm. of the net worth mm -hmm. portion of it. Because like I would say, like, once you're learning the business of the renovations, you mm -hmm. can make mistakes on the long-term holds and be fine. Mm -hmm. if you overpay or you underpay on or whatever right mm -hmm. um if you hold the property for two years more you're gonna make it like you won't lose any money it's all good right no big deal mm -hmm. just hold the property longer we know barry's gonna appreciate you'll be fine if you do a flip and you've only done one or two renovations and you totally mess up a flip and you overpaid and it you were in for more than it sold and you lose 30k this early in your in your career could be devastating mm -hmm. right so i'm not saying you shouldn't flip or you you know you can't but i'm just saying usually flipping is a more advanced strategy that we kind of do a little later once we got this knocked down you have mm -hmm. the team the members you've done 10 flips like now it's easy now we go to the real flips and sure play in that game you've done a bunch right mm -hmm. it's guaranteed you're going to win so that's kind of what i recommend i always like for you or for really everybody to focus on the buy and holds and build up that, that net worth Mm -hmm. get the equity and then with three or four years experience of just doing that full time then we go to the flips and then we have more fun <laughs> but fun is no good at the beginning we want boring and mm -hmm. you know strategic is what we want at the beginning then we have fun later cool sound good any yeah. final questions no I, it's uh this let's wrap it up real quick just so you know what the game plan is so what's for you you tell me what's the game plan for you after this right uh, now go back go back to uh barry and uh just keep building the team, networking, and uh, yeah, try to get a couple more of the buy and hold properties. Perfect. So go back. To, I put berries. I don't know mm -hmm. why. We're going back to berries. <laughs> you like fruit. That's yeah. why. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Focus on the team, the realtor, the contractors. Ask the other investors in your area. Who are they using? What are they doing? Etc. Really focus on this for like a good month or two. Just get mm -hmm. that locked in. What's next for you after that? Find the find the property. Make the offers. Find deals offers and how many are you gonna buy hopefully are you doing, doing these on your own or with partners probably the first two on my own but then when you run out of mortgages you have to find partners perfect so we got two deals hopefully we can do two deals right on your own fantastic mm -hmm. three we're gonna brag and find partners <laughs> <laughs> I brag all the time I love bragging okay so that's basically the name of the game Hey man, I've done this. I got the system. I can do it again and again and again. Are you mm -hmm. in? That's basically yeah. it. Find the partners and then we just do this all over again. We do step two and three over and over again. Mm -hmm. Partners, deals, partners, deals. And that's, that's your life for the next foreseeable future. That's it, man. That's a lifetime of uh, real estate. That's, awesome. that's the game. Awesome. I'm excited for you. Yeah, thanks, man. Cool. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, guys, that's the video. If you liked it, hit that like button below. Also, hit that subscribe button so we can see more of each other. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.